welcome to another episode of engage cast today we have uh, vibhu from grade up thank you so much vibhu for uh, sharing uh, uh, for allowing us uh, this opportunity to talk to you and of course sparing some time i'm sure it's a busy schedule for everyone uh, so very nice to have you here vibhu so sure, so sure, my pleasure i think uh, great to have uh, on this show and uh, hopefully i'll be able to sort of uh, share something some of the learning that we have uh made uh, over the past couple of months in this covid situation and hopefully that will be helpful for your uh, uh, viewers as well certainly certainly so vibhu uh, very quickly if you could just give us a quick introduction of uh, uh, a little bit about grade up uh, what the, what are the things that you handle in grade up sure so yeah i am one of the co-founders for uh, grade up we started this uh, in late uh, 2015 uh, in september of 2015 we launched our first version Uh, we started this journey with a goal that uh, we want to build an exam preparation platform for uh, students which was more to be driven by community uh, this has evolved a lot over a period of last 5 uh, years almost 5 years that we have spent uh, working on it the market has changed and uh, uh, a lot of things have changed uh, by then uh, the adoption and everything has grown much faster in last couple of years and yeah so i take care of the product growth and uh, certain part of the business uh, at grada So yeah, that's that's uh, my job at Greta. Awesome, awesome. So of course, uh, the whole theme of uh, the special edition of Engage Cast is about COVID nineteen and understanding the impact that it has had on different businesses, different industry verticals, and edtech has been a very interesting space to watch out for. Uh, most of the industries, of course, uh, that we know of have been impacted in a certain uh, way to a certain degree. Edtech. probably is one of those lucky few industry verticals who are uh, who are uh, having a positive impact so to say uh, as as far as your brand is concerned as far as grade up is concerned how has covid impacted uh, grade up and of course uh, we would love to find out your perspective of the impact on the entire edtech industry in general and uh, at the same time has it uh, affected your profile as uh, a co-founder or as a chief product guy sure i think uh, as you mentioned that uh, the edtech uh, industry is on the positive side very few sort of uh, companies or the industries uh, that have been on the positive side of the uh, covid uh, with the lockdown uh, students are uh, they don't have any other option just to sort of uh, sit at their homes they cannot even go out and uh, play uh, in the grounds now uh, i mean I, i go out and see all these parks locked and uh, you can't go there i think uh, students have uh, no other choice uh, than to sort of sit at home Uh, what it has resulted definitely is a lot more time uh, that is spent on the screen uh, be it games or be it uh, social uh, media or even education has now been uh, transmitted through uh, these screens uh, uh, we have been trying to do this for long but uh, i think uh, this has forced I and mean, this change has forced that adoption uh, in the parents in the students uh, across so yeah, i mean uh, that has been a very positive uh, impact uh, what we have seen is that the adoption has grown Uh, multiple folds uh, so in terms of engagement we have seen a uh, uh, good uh, uh, increase in engagement so in the range of 60 uh, 70% the enrollments has also gone up uh, where uh, uh, students willingness uh, to pay for these kind of courses has also gone up i think uh, the, this is this is great times for edtech and they have got an opportunity uh, to uh, to show what they can do uh, to these parents and students i think which was not uh, which which you which we had to spend a lot of money and then get that uh, now because they are forced uh, without spending a lot of money uh, just by showing uh, uh, because they have to adopt it and by showing what quality stuff that we can do uh, to them they are like astonished also i mean we have uh, seen reviews from people saying that uh, we have not seen teachers of that high quality because these are students from tier 2 tier 3 cities who have not seen those high class class teachers ever so i think yeah i mean it's it's been exciting times for us and uh, hopefully uh, 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 this will change Uh, uh this will be the golden era for edtech which will change the whole sort of things for uh, the industry so that's 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 what we hope for awesome uh, it, it has sort of uh, because the adoption has increased so many folds i think uh, we have to reset our targets and uh, we have to reset our uh, growth uh, uh, thing so what we were predicting as a growth in a quarter we were able to do achieve that in a month's time so i think yeah that was another goal that we had that we have to uh, reset those targets although it's it's uh, for a very good uh purpose so yeah i think that's that's good absolutely I, so i think uh, what demonetization did to fintech in india i think covid is probably doing something similar uh to edtech at least that's that's what uh, uh, preliminary reports are suggesting 
so right. which is all which is definitely good for uh, the industry uh, great point that you mentioned about uh, increase in engagement and enrollment we'll get to those points definitely uh, uh, to talk about that in a bit of detail uh, what i want to talk to you about right now is like you mentioned that your growth uh, 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 metrics or whatever you guys had uh, basically hoped to achieve uh, in probably this year you guys are going to sort that out in a quarter thanks to covid uh, with this kind of increased demand are there any kind of changes that you are trying to make to the product to ensure that the overall customer experience doesn't get affected uh, so i think how we work uh, is on a batch size uh, so like typically it's a large class model that we sort of have a class model that we implement we have a uh, for uh, younger students their class batch size is typically 200 of students for uh, uh, post grad students it ranges from anywhere between 700 to 1000 uh, students in a uh, class uh, so for us it's it's a very uh, sort of a, a add on kind of a thing so uh, if if you have more students we would launch another batch uh, and uh, we would want to maintain the same quality that we have across the batches so yeah i think uh, that does not make any difference but at the same time uh, it's important to have more number of features now Uh, more number of sales people to be in the team so that they can sort of sell uh, to the people who are in demand so yeah all those constraints are there from uh, the experience perspective on the students end uh, it's more uh, from the supply side on our end that we need to sort of ramp up uh, in terms of product and everything uh, because everything was already taken care of there was not mm-hmm. much of a difference that we have mm-hmm. to build there uh, being a like a, a, a sort of a add on thing every new batch Uh, uh, adds a new uh, layer to it, and that's that's how it's uh, scalable uh, in our model. So not too much of a difference there, but yeah, more teachers, more uh, mentors, and more uh, sales people to sort of uh, set this growth. Awesome, awesome. So uh, another interesting question, which basically a lot of people are uh, struggling to understand right now, is about the marketing and growth. The the of course pre-COVID. uh an acquisition led strategy was always very effective where you put in certain amount of money every quarter and you get a desired number of leads and you basically work on that that system is of course established but now covid has changed a lot of things for a lot of brands where spending is not that simple uh it is a bit of a luxury right now most definitely so acquisition becomes a bit of a problem right uh growth also is linked to some of those strategies which are very acquisition heavy now for for in your case in your industry uh, in your industry and of course for greater is there any kind of change that you are seeing post covid with respect to your marketing and growth strategy uh so i think uh, after uh, this covid i think a lot of businesses have become very sort of uh, cash uh, constrained or they are not spending a lot of money i think uh, their businesses have been shut a lot of Uh, businesses have gone to zero revenue uh, after this covid so to be on the conservative side they stopped uh, spending money uh, on on marketing and all what it has done is because it's more like a demand sup- demand supply sort of a game the supply has uh, uh, so the demand of uh, these uh, places to advertise and everything has gone down drastically so what we have seen in our case specifically uh, uh, the the acquisition cost has gone da- gone down substantially so uh, they vary between anywhere between 20 to 40% so if you were acquiring one person at say x rupees now we are able to acquire it at 0.6 0.7 x of what it is what it has done for us is for the same amount of money or a little bit extra we can get to x uh, the number of acquisitions uh, which are there so yeah i mean it has been positive for us because our business is not hit uh, as per se directly so we are growing on our business as well and the acquisition costs have gone down so we are doubling down on uh, those acquisitions and then sort of uh, helping us uh, our business to grow further and go deeper so it's it's more like a opposite to what other businesses would do so yeah i think uh, that's another uh, positive uh, thing that has uh, come up uh, so because the overall market uh, uh, cutting their marketing spends uh, it has become cheaper for us mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah, i mean uh, we are doubling down on growth and marketing at this point in time so uh, i mean you could see that edtechs would be one of the largest advertisers at this point in time uh, because of uh, the cost effectiveness that they are getting the money at excellent excellent so i think that's a good it's the most definitely a good point for you guys where uh, like you mentioned the acquisition cost on the traditional channels has come down so the the, the kind of double sided positive impact that edtech is kind of seeing right now is definitely going to play out in the future and considering you guys are acquiring so many more users right now uh, are you for, are you encountering any kind of challenges 
with respect to the same uh, because of the added traffic the added pressure are you foreseeing any kind of issues that did not exist earlier uh, i think uh, so uh, as so i think uh, our engineering team has been great to build systems which are uh, more scalable and uh, the overall uh, model is uh, as i mentioned it's more like a add on batch for every uh, uh, set of new users that are coming in uh, but uh, there has been a, a problem on the supply side uh, to be able to create those uh, batches we need to have high quality teachers in place uh training those teachers making sure building the systems that can define how these teachers are doing and then uh, pushing them to improve on the quality uh, of their delivery and uh, scaling up faster than what we expected so i think we would knew uh, that covid is coming we would have uh, done scaling of our sales team much faster but i think uh, we didn't know uh, that so yeah i mean uh, we are uh, we are hiring people even uh, at this point in time and asking them to join us uh, uh, even at through remote sort of setup Uh, i think one of the things uh, brilliant thing that we did was we set up a communication tool just before uh, uh, the covid we started working from home and that has helped really well for us to uh, be an organized team and uh, be able to sort of uh, translate it into a more uh, so as as founders you we were like pata nahi uh, work from home hoga bhi ki nahi hoga will people be able to work uh, i think at this point in time we are very happy with the kind of work uh, that has come out uh, from the overall team and uh, So yeah, I mean that has pushed us to look at uh, is work from home a very positive thing if we can sort of uh, manage it in a nice way. Yeah, I think uh, this this will change the overall industry uh, in a in a much uh, better in a different direction where uh, probably half of the workforce might not even come to office uh, once in a week. So yeah, uh, I mean that's that's the movement that we are uh, seeing. So from overall uh, considering uh, the the uh, sort of uh, scale and how we are handling it. i think supply is a challenge for us and we are trying to uh, fix that so that we can manage the quality of everything there awesome awesome i completely agree with the point ki if uh, brands would have known that covid was going to hit earlier a lot of things would have been very different but uh, yeah. yeah i think the impact is going to be very long term and talking yeah. about long term uh, uh, i was having this discussion with a fellow marketer and we were talking about uh, how edtech is blossoming right now but uh it this that's a short term perspective do you think in the long run when uh, the impact of covid is probably going to be lessened after the uh, emergence of let's say a vaccine uh, do you foresee things going back to normal or do you think the kind of edtech impact we are seeing right now is going to be long lasting and probably becomes a norm in most countries uh i think uh, so how how we look at it we always knew that this would happen Uh, i mean what uh, covid has done probably is like sort of squeezed that couple of years of time in 3 uh, 4 months and then sort of uh, pushed the adoption i i, I think the positives of uh, the edtech is way way more than uh, these offline uh, institutes which are there there are obviously different uh, kinds of uh, offline institutes uh, these smaller uh, mom and pop shops which are highly uh, unorganized sector uh, they don't they don't have any expertise i mean they don't know how to deliver high quality content they don't know Uh, to uh, uh, to they they don't know how to build uh, that content, how to track a student or how to uh, manage a student. So uh, all those things had to uh, move to an uh, a structured environment, which edtech was uh, always capable of uh, doing. And uh, uh, I believe that uh, uh, the the overall. Uh, so we were looking at say for example three years of time when it uh, moves to online. I think right now it's somewhere around two percent of the overall market share. Uh, after this lockdown it should definitely go up to 10 12 15% of uh, uh, the market share uh, which is there uh, it's it's because all these offline businesses which uh, exists right now beat schools or beat offline coaching institute they are also forced to have some kind of an online presence at this point in time because they have this uh, captive audience uh, uh, which which uh, uh, are studying already studying from them so um uh, it's 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 very clear that uh, the movement is happening uh, some people would obviously go back uh, uh, to the normal state but over a period of next couple of years uh, this this thing will uh, come uh, on on uh, digital uh, systems completely i think uh, we have seen that uh, happening for uh, e-commerce we have seen that happening for uh, new markets getting built uh, this will happen for edtech as well uh, i think uh, it might be biased from my side because i being uh, belonging to an edtech probably you go out and ask for or uh, from somebody who is in from an offline uh, side and they would say no just after the covid it will sort of uh, get back to normal what it was before um, i think uh, previously also we had seen movement uh, just before the covid also there was good adoption there was happening going on uh, at least in the more mature market uh, which existed 
uh, but uh, uh, in even in the school market now or or in the higher uh, school market this movement is very prominent and uh, uh, we are we are almost sure now that uh, at least like that's our hunch in that most of it will move online in next uh, couple of years uh, and uh, it will continue moving the percentage is continuing to increase uh, with with time and eventually it will be uh, complete off. awesome so uh, i think a great point that you have brought up is about digital transformation and uh, how in some industries it has really sped up uh, just last week i was talking to folks from the retail industry and the whose majority business was in offline retail and they are talking about how offline and uh, online the worlds are going to uh, converge really quickly and they are working on making that happen i of course most definitely agree uh, but i am thinking about one of the few challenges uh, that of course education industry involves is the existence of so many different uh, 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 parties like there are parents involved there are students involved there are learners involved and in a traditional environment uh, uh, in a school structure offline structure uh, there are set points where they interact and they kind of uh, work together to uh, progress forward how are you facilitating that kind of a three way communication right now to really simulate that offline experience and bring that into the online world do you think that is a problem uh, are we even solving for that i think i think one of the very important points that you picked up that uh, fundamentally a student is very social i mean uh, i mean they go to coaching or they go to school to meet their friends i mean studying is obviously one of the important parts but uh, if you ask a student they would say that yaar apne dosto se milne jata hai i think that's 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 a very important aspect of uh, of things i think uh, with uh, social media coming up and uh, all those interactions being built i think that has moved on to digital front as well uh, to a certain extent and these are very fundamental uh, points that a student or uh, a kid looks uh, for uh, so as i mentioned before about grade up we started with a community uh, based platform where uh, uh, students have any doubts they can sort of quickly go out and post in the community and they would get an answer so that um, they would they started helping uh, each other in solving their doubts practicing along with each other seeing where they stand and do those things i think that's that's something which is very fundamentally built uh, inside grade up and that's something that we understand uh, probably in edtech industry could clearly say that uh, uh, we have uh, one of the best understandings uh, about this community approach uh, which is there and that has helped us uh, definitely uh, the kind of numbers that we see right now or the kind of adoption that we have seen is built over this uh, community thing uh, so for our products that we have be it classroom or be it uh, uh, test series uh, it's it's built over that community so if you have certain doubts and you want to ask uh, those doubts from the teacher or from your peers uh, you can go out and do that uh, very effectively you can see what are the other problems that students are facing you can Uh, sort of make sure that uh, uh, where you stand and see where you inside it, and uh, not just that. We also manage uh, teach parents as well. So our teachers would do parent teacher meeting every month. Uh, uh, so it's it's very similar where parents would come and ask questions how they can be a part of the improvement uh, in their students' uh, education journey, and there would be tips giving in, and then uh, there are these report cards that get shared to uh, uh, these parents, uh, which is very similar to the offline. Uh, setup which is there right now i think it's it's very important uh, for uh, the overall set of things to be engaging for the student to uh, to make sure that uh, it is community led it's more social it's more uh, built uh, where uh, you feel a batch like structure and you see where you stand and uh, do kinds of things so yeah it is very critical and uh, for it to succeed i think uh, i would like to believe that this is one of the very important aspects that has to be solved uh, to to drive that i think that will drive engagement that will drive uh quality learning on the students end so they would not get bored i mean uh, to be true education is very boring nobody wants to do it until and unless it's more social it's more exciting and uh, valuable for them so yeah i think uh, awesome. that's 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 a problem that we are as a edtech industry have to solve it and to take it uh, really to scale it awesome that's very good to hear because i have always been very curious personally i have never used an edtech platform i have of course mm-hmm. uh, experienced a couple uh, in theory here and there but i've never personally used one uh i understand that of course there are uh, there, it's very important to have these parallel communication channels with everyone involved where the student and the learner and the uh, the learners uh, the teachers and the teachers and the parents they are obviously involved uh the biggest uh 
factor for me, uh, important factor for me with respect to an app that I use or a product that I use, which is digital, is the kind of engagement hooks that are built into the product, right? So that I keep coming on to it. And fundamentally, an edtech platform uh, needs to have very strong engagement hooks to ensure that the kid or the learner is hanging on and learning and continues to do so, inspired to do that every day. How is GradeUp ensuring that right now? And of course, how did it do things earlier? And has there been any kind of a change in your communication or your engagement strategy post-COVID? Sure. I think, uh, as you mentioned, that it is very important for uh, uh, for a student to engage with the overall system. I think one of the very important things that we figured out was uh, the planning part of uh, for the student. Uh, so if you look at, if you open up uh, the whole gamut of uh, things in front of the student, a student is incapable of planning how they should complete their own syllabus. Uh, so what we have gone ahead and built uh, in our system is that here is a day-wise study plan that you need to follow. On the uh, study plan part of uh, things, it is very important that you tell the student, okay, that these are the five things that you need to do today. Uh, so that will help you to complete the syllabus, uh, complete syllabus in time and, and uh, do things there. The second part is, uh, it's not just the lectures part of it. It has to be very interactive. So uh, what, what happened in our class, it's not just a one-to-many sort of a delivery. Uh, in that class, a teacher on the fly throws a question to a student that, okay, uh, I have just uh, uh, given a concept to you or uh, taught a concept to you. Uh, now, here is a question you should attempt uh, to it. Uh, so, a student would do a, a question attempt on it and then teacher would on the fly see that how many students have done it correct, how many students have done it wrong and then can take a call whether they would want to uh, make sure that the concept is uh, taught again to make sure that all the students uh, have learned it properly or uh, so all these kind of interactions improve the engagement of uh, students. So there's this leaderboard that comes uh, in between the class that showcasing, okay, this is the guy who is the topper. Um, so you would see, right, that uh, they would do a hand, hand raise in the class that, Achha, batao, kis ko answer aata hai, and they would give an answer and they feel proud about uh, giving that answer. All of those elements are built in, in the class that everybody now can give their own answers because they are in their home sitting and they are answering. And then there is a leaderboard that teacher can talk about, Achha, hai, is ne, uh, has given all the answers correct. And that has a very good impact on engagement. I mean, uh, we have run both the type of classes uh, without questions and with questions. And we have seen that the interactive classes have 25-30% uh, more engagement as compared to uh, the non-interactive uh, classes. So uh, these are the engage. I mean, uh, we are building on technology where students can di directly talk to the teacher uh, with the video camera. Uh, so it's like a teacher can sort of see the uh, student that, okay, this is the problem. Uh, that I have, can you please uh, explain again? And then it's a it's an interaction between the teacher and the student. Uh, so engagement is very critical. I mean, uh, we don't really want uh, just to have the content in place or the service or the classes in place, and students are not attending it because they would not benefit out of it. Uh, it's it's very important to build those engagement uh, uh, things in between. Uh, so, for example, another thing that we have is uh, we have a quiz that happens just after the class that every student would take and then they would earn distinctions on, on those quizzes that, okay, if you if you know this topic well, if you have learned this topic well, you would be able to get a distinction in this quiz. And then there is this whole leaderboard on all the quizzes that were taken across the course and uh, and who is talking on the leaderboard. And uh, even the teacher would know, okay, this student is good, this student is bad, then there can be a feedback mechanism that uh, you can learn those things. Uh, it's important. So I think uh, education, at least uh, what we are being in a test prep industry, which is more outcome uh, focused, that uh, whether you have got a rank in a particular exam that you're giving or not, uh, it's very important that you uh, are effective, uh, you are able to bring in those outcomes. And to be able to do that, it's very important that in the overall system, we have certain things in place that can uh, help a student to engage uh, with the overall system in a much nicer way. So yeah, I think uh, that's one of the challenges uh, that exists right now. And there are certain things that we are doing uh, to sort of uh, take uh, to take care of these challenges. And we believe that uh, technology will, uh, in, in coming times, technology will be able to solve uh, these challenges. Um, to the another question that you had in terms of COVID, uh, has, has something changed for us uh, to be able to, uh, in terms of how we can, how we are engaging these students? Uh, so I think engagement plan has already been there. Uh, it's just that because now there's a huge influx of students, uh, it's even more, we, be, we are even more responsible to make sure that uh, we are able to engage those uh, number of students. We can give personalized constant feedbacks uh, to them. Uh, and that's, that's something that we are uh, working on. That's, that's something that we are improving our uh, uh, student success team, the size of student success team that is going to give the feedback 
uh, back to the student and, and improve them. I think uh, at the end, it's about how uh, we can improve the outcomes. And that's, that's the idea. Then, then only we'll be able to succeed and compete with all these offline players uh, which exist and show phenomenal results at this point. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That a couple of those uh, practical insights that you mentioned relating it, relating it to the actual uh, offline classroom scenario, how you're building it into the product. I think that was fantastic. Uh, it's almost like a real-time doubt-solving kind of a session. I think that was very interesting to hear. Um, now, of course, being from uh, a marketing automation company where we try and understand uh, what are the best ways to kind of enhance user engagement for a digital consumer brand. Uh, I am always very curious to figure out what are those things that are working out for our brands or for uh, different industry verticals. Uh, what, what, are, what is the best kind of engagement strategy that you have uh, witnessed, uh, which has helped you solve a lot of these uh, mission critical use cases? Uh, I'm, I'm sure it is a cross channel uh, uh, kind of a setup that you guys are running, but is there something which has basically enhanced the kind of engagement that you used to get compared to now uh, due to a change in the kind of communication strategy that you have because of COVID? Is there something like that you have mentioned? So it's a two part question. So, so I think uh, on or to answer your uh, first question, uh, I think uh, one very important thing is to be able to build the funnel or the journey of a, of a, of a user. So in our case, uh, uh, that's a student. Or uh, in the case for the school students, it's parents as well as the right. uh, So uh, I think that's, that's very important. Any business uh, has to make sure that what exactly the funnel of uh, your students are. And then you focus on those funnels and move people from one step to another, to another, to another. Uh, if people want to, like, and that's, that's something that we have learned. If people want to jump, from one step to another, let them jump, but your product or your communication or CRM does not uh, push for that jump. You take a person step by step because you know once the person moves from uh, this step to another step to another step, the kind of conversion at the end that you get is much higher as compared to if people have jumped uh, uh, those stages of uh, the funnel. So yeah, I think uh, uh, it's very critical to define the right funnel and then uh, build a strategy around that funnel to uh, uh, move people from uh, one stage to another. I think as you mentioned, channels are uh, one, uh, so there are various channels and then you have to build strategy, uh, various channels come for various costs. Uh, they start from free notifications to emails to uh, SMS to uh, uh, even retargeting in certain sense uh, uh, for getting the users back uh, in a certain way. Uh, specifically on the uh, COVID thing, I think uh, because uh, there has been a whole inflow and, uh, of demand and, and uh, users that are there, we started doing a lot of free classes. So we uh, did a, a big campaign uh, saying that Padhai nahi rukegi, like everything uh, stopped because of this COVID and we said, right, uh, you can't go to your school, you can't go to your coaching, uh, but uh, you can definitely come on to grade up and can access being a paid user. You be you being a free user, not uh, being a paid user of grade up, we would still uh, go out and uh, extend our services to you. And uh, you will be able to access uh, those three, four hours of daily classes uh, for free on grade up. And uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, one very successful campaign that we ran. Uh, in first uh, 30 35 days and still going on uh, uh, with the name of padhai ne rukegi which has worked really well for us i mean that's that's something that has improved a lot of engagement for our users uh, that's also because we have uh, pushed ourselves to give a lot of content for free at this point in time uh, just to build the brand and, and uh, uh, being able to uh, being up being there when they are looking for something uh, for uh, learning or for studying uh, yeah awesome so, Vipu, just a quick uh, question connected to what you just said. Uh, I think it's a uh, it's fair play on your part to offer the new uh, influx of users uh, free classes or uh, to basically let them get an experience of the greater platform. And of course, the idea would be to uh, ensure that a certain percentage of these uh, users end up paying, uh, end up converting. How are you ensuring that uh, you get these new influx of users to kind of uh, get an essence within a limited kind of time frame where of course you can't offer everything for free. Uh, the freemium model itself will have certain limits. So within that limited kind of uh, time space uh, uh, frame, what are those uh, value additions that you are trying to kind of push to this new user so that he ends up paying? So I think uh, it, it's more from a support perspective also for these students. So what like uh, a session has really uh, recently started from uh, April and 
uh, we believe that uh, the schools could not open by end of july or even uh, august uh, by the end of august so what we have decided is what are the first three four chapters of every class we would go out and uh, teach those chapters uh, to the students for free of uh, cost at this point in time if anybody is interested in the overall uh, they like the overall uh, uh, classes that we are doing and they want to be have more personalized support and more uh, 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 like a smaller batch size uh, which is there they can go out and uh, buy our uh, paid product uh, which is there so i would i would not say that uh, it's 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 the same that we would have been doing without the covid thing it's a it's much more than that but at the same time people also realize that okay uh, they are putting in so much of effort and uh, we are getting this x amount of value at this point in time from uh, these courses where we are not getting personalized uh, attention uh, we would get 2x 3x value if we uh, go out and buy, buy the product from uh, them uh, or the service from them and education as a as a as a as a industry people don't care about spending money there if they are getting the outcomes if they are if the service that they are giving is efficient they are fine paying a lot of uh, uh, money uh, for that i think that's that's not a problem it's it has to be very effective and uh, that's that's what we are trying to build uh, for our students so yeah i mean uh, there are good percentage of the users who are now converting into a paid set of uh, consumers as well so Excellent. it's a it's a win win situation for uh, both of us where uh, we are able to get a good number of trials uh, at a at a very low cost or uh, almost for free for these uh, students and then converting them into a paid uh, consumer because they like our service and they want to extend it for the whole year uh, rather than just sticking for till the time uh, the covid is there awesome so it's like a, uh, it's on a strict need basis and of course it's kind of a personalized kind of a system that you have over there yeah, very yeah, interesting I, it does not make sense right so uh, i mean students are uh, wasting their time at home that's something that we really don't uh, uh, want it to be that way and uh, we really want okay even if you don't want to buy it but this is a critical time of your life uh, this couple of months you would have gone to school and studied uh, those certain topics i mean we are fine teaching you uh, those topics and uh, helping you out brilliant brilliant all right last couple of questions vibhu uh, my favorite one of course and i have slight twist to this of course considering your industry has been doing so well uh, you are having so many new users of course touch wood i wouldn't want to ruin that for you guys but uh, at 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 this point of time where most businesses are looking inwards and saying you know what i am probably not going to acquire a lot of new users here this quarter or next quarter as well i'll i'll focus on my existing users and see if i can build on the demand and service them whenever the lockdown ends or of if possible to service them right now i'll service them and increase the cltv and get more value out of them probably not the case in ed tech or is it so that's what i'm trying to understand is retention important right now in this scenario for the ed tech industry and for grade up in general uh, i think uh, so uh, i mean uh, in when we sort of uh, go out and think uh, about it uh, if you look at the overall funnel uh, the adoption was slower before so like people who were deep down in the funnel um, they were the people who were buying uh, the product now we have seen because of the higher adoption and people uh, needing those parts because the, the need of those parts have increased uh, uh, the the paid consumer are now uh, like even uh, not just not that engaged user are also going to buy are are buying or purchasing those uh, edtech products uh, there at this point in time so i mean if we wanted to uh, spend uh, if you wanted to make so for example in our funnel if you wanted to have 100 minutes of time spent on the classes before the purchase was happening or part of the funnel before covid that has reduced to 45 minutes right now uh, wow. so so i mean that's that's a very uh, so as you said that uh, is engagement a very important thing i, I believe it is yes but uh, if 50% of the users who were buying the product before had Uh, more than 100 minutes of uh, classroom experience now that 50% has reduced to 45 minutes uh, of the classroom experience that they have so yeah i mean lesser engagement more revenue that's 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 the case that has come out uh, for us and uh, uh, i mean that's that's what is pushing uh, more people to getting converted into uh, those paid uh, consumers at this point because awesome. there, there is a need there's a need which is there and what kind of a retention strategy do you guys have in place right now Oh, uh, so I mean, uh, that's I mean, for any digital product retention is is the key. I mean, uh, you keep on acquiring users and you keep on losing their watch list. Uh, uh, you spend the tons of money and you don't uh, sort of end up retaining uh, those users or converting those users into a paid consumer. So all our energy at this point in time goes to uh, convert a user from uh, a free user to a forty-five minute 
engaged user because that then as as soon as we reach that particular point uh, the conversion percentages uh, for that uh, user goes higher much higher uh, there so i mean we do a lot of things to make sure that uh, a student reaches to that uh, i mean and it starts from very basic things of uh, making sure that the product is very simple i mean uh, it's it's defined so i mentioned that funnels are very important that if you have defined that steps uh, of those funnels i think your product team your crm team and every team can work in a same for towards the same goal that you need to move uh, people to those uh, funnels uh, so yeah i mean uh, right now uh, we we have a multi channel multi sort of segmentation mm-hmm. approach that we do uh, uh, there are, you build out uh, you cut uh, users on different segments and then uh, start communicating to them certain, certain points use different channels to make sure that they come and achieve uh, that goal that you have set up for uh, yourself so yeah i mean uh, I, i think crm team can answer that in a much detailed way sure but uh, it's it's very crucial and uh, uh, if you are able to achieve that for a higher percentage of users you don't need to spend or more money on uh, new users or you do that by having a higher conversion percentage or a higher uh, ca- uh, ltv with a much lower cac which is there uh, so yeah i mean uh, that's that's all uh, the business set that gets uh, created what you are spending and then what you are earning out of those uh, users and uh, if the retention is good if you are able to get higher percentage of people to convert uh, uh, into your paid users uh, you have a very high margins uh, good business uh, economics uh, that gets built out of awesome and uh, most effective communication channel that uh, you feel works really well in ed tech of course considered institution right now or previously as well uh, so uh, we have seen most of our traffic comes from mobile uh, uh, be it m web or uh, be it a app Uh, uh, which is the uh, uh, majority of it is an app, uh, uh, which which is there. I think uh, both in terms of retention and our ability to reach out uh, to them is much higher uh, when we do uh, via app and uh, uh, or uh, when we do it uh, through email. That's that's not uh, very good. I think uh, we have been able to uh, find. So if you talk about channels, notification is one channel that we can uh, really use very frequently at and at a very low cost, uh, which is there. but uh, i think there are uh, certain people certain segments of people who would respond very well to emails uh, because that's that's something that's their habit that they would go out and check those uh, emails uh, which are there uh, overall as a common thing i think notification is the best uh, channel that works i think there are certain other growth uh, related metrics uh, growth, growth related setups that you can create so for example calendar integration is one that works really well with the classes so if you have a class at 6 pm uh you have a calendar integration it sort of pops up uh, uh, just 5 minutes before uh, the class is happening uh, um, there are other uh, ways of uh, acquiring uh, the the user's phone um, so you would have seen those uh, floating icons that can uh, like move around on the screen of the phone even when uh, right. the app is not open that's another right. sort of ways to uh, bring so when people keep on opening their phones i think notification uh, uh, screen and the uh the home screen these are the two most important assets that you have over the phone uh, there are sticky notifications that you can build and uh, and can sort of work around that as well to uh, get more users on the app uh, i think they are way more prominent than just the app icon uh, which is there so that's that's something that works really well for us super super i'm sure that will be very useful for a lot of uh, uh, ops guys marketers who are listening to this and sure. of course last couple of questions uh top two challenges in webo bhushan's life right now <laughs> i think uh, that so uh, i think uh, one uh, very uh, big challenge obviously is to be able to sort of differentiate between the work and uh, the home home life i think uh, uh, with with more responsibilities at home uh, as well when you are there uh, at the home you have to give sure. time uh, you can't sort of take uh, uh, calls at 9 o'clock in the evening and uh, and say that in a calm so i think uh, that that uh, uh, that balance uh, is something that has to be uh, sort of found in and absolutely uh, that so uh, on the weekend also you are at home and say ki yaar nahi kaam hi kar leta hu na thoda yeah yeah a lot and, of us uh, are struggling with that absolutely yeah. so i think that's that's one uh, i think challenge and, and i don't feel uh, good about it i think i feel bad uh, about that as well but yeah i mean it like it's, it's your your mind goes to where you are abhi khali ho to chal Uh, let me spend a couple of hours on uh, this and quickly complete that off uh, that's that's one i think uh, second uh, this stage that in which our uh, organization is uh, uh, we are scaling very fast and uh, it is important to be able to build that second layer of, uh, of people who can 
uh, work, uh, uh, do things on their own uh, so that it can reduce reliance on uh, us. Uh, because sometimes we end up becoming bottlenecks, uh, which you really don't want uh, to be. I think uh, setting that uh, org setup uh, is something which is very critical. If you're not able to do that, we have, I mean, uh, we'll not be able to grow that fast. And uh, uh, it will be a very suboptimal solution uh, to uh, building an organization that we are trying to build. So yeah, I think uh, aligning those people in the right direction and sort of uh, making sure that they are able to take that decision and uh, uh, move, move the overall organization in the right way forward I think that's that's uh, something which is uh, critical at this point in time. I think uh, we are working hard towards that, and hopefully uh, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, awesome, team. awesome, awesome! I, I think we should uh, we should do a webinar with you. We should be titled "Building a Growth Team During a Pandemic." I think we will we will get a lot of viewers for that. A lot of people are struggling with that, most definitely. I, th uh, I think we we ended up building our growth team. Like uh, I think we had Himanshu on board in December, early December. I mean, phenomenal guy. Uh, having a lot of experience in growth and 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 also we were lucky to have like uh, almost three four months before uh, it was going to happen. So sure. a lot of things got set up uh, because of that. Yeah, pure sort of coincidence there. Okay. Awesome, awesome. And of course, uh, the last question which I'm going to ask you for the day is uh, related a little bit to our present and our future. Do you think work from home reality is going to be true for most of us Indians? Uh, so I think uh, that's that's what we also keep on discussing uh, for uh, the work. I think uh, it's very important to be able to track uh, the work of uh, the people and set up. So if you if you have clear uh, work being set up for people that okay this is your task these are your tasks that you have to complete in uh, uh, this much time duration. If uh, that tracking and that work is done and you can sort of give a very continuous feedback uh, and and do a very quick communication with the person i believe that that's that's very much possible uh, not just for people uh, who are uh, working from home it's not good just good for them because they don't have to spend time commuting and uh, doing all those things but at the same time it's good for business as well because uh, the cost uh, for uh, operational at least for operational heavy uh, profiles goes down so i mean uh, if you look at the sales team uh, you have x number of calls to make and the quality of the calls are good uh, i mean you can do that uh, from anywhere uh, in the world and, and 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 sort of not need to come to office and uh, do it. So uh, I believe that uh, with these, uh, once these tools and these tracking mechanisms are in place, uh, uh, businesses would be more than happy to uh, take it uh, work from home uh, kind of a model. I I believe that it's just the matter of time that uh, these things get set up and uh, business start uh, moving in that direction that uh, they do a complete or majority of their ops at least heavy tasks uh, more. Uh, work from home and not uh, uh, getting to office and then uh, setting that up. So yeah, I mean that's that's not far. I see. Cool, cool. I I mostly agree with you as well. I think we most definitely are headed towards a work from from home future. Very futuristic and sci-fi, but yeah, I think it's going to happen. Uh, well, that's about it for. I don't have any more questions for you. Thank you so much for answering all of the questions with so much uh, candor. Really enjoyed this conversation, Vibhu. Uh, fantastic insights from EdTech and I'm curious to see how it all shapes up in 2020 and of course, uh, 2020 and beyond. Uh, all the very best from everyone at Team WebEngage and I uh, hope you guys continue to grow like a rocket ship. Sure, thanks a lot. It was a pleasure talking to you and a uh, pretty interesting uh, set of questions and uh, viewpoint. So, yeah, thanks for having me here. Thank you. Pleasures all as Vibo. Thank you so much. Uh